first scripture reading of today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 17. Learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, and plead for the widow. The second scripture reading comes from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 17 through 18. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Will you pray with me? Lord, I I pray that you would pour through me this day the word that you would have us hear. Not my word, but your word. Not my opinion, but your word. Your word, Lord, that we so desperately need. I pray that it would come to us in power. Come to us in clarity. Meet us at our point of need and equip us to be your people. I pray this. In the strong name of Jesus, amen. So we are here at the fifth Sunday of Lent, a season of preparation, of sanction time to look at ourselves. Sanction time to look at ourselves and what it is about us, what it is about our schedules, our biases, our fears, our excesses. What is it about us in relation to Jesus? in relation to Jesus and what we are to do to be of best service. Oftentimes during this season of Lent, we we jettison things. And and are we willing to be transformed by these actions? Transformed, you may ask, from what? To whom? It may be something we give up, not just bad or shallow things, but those things of behavior, of the body, of the soul that distance us from God. So during this time of Lent, given the chaos, the threats and the reality of war, the widening cultural and social divide, we have the chance to recharge. Yeah, we have the chance to recharge, to reimagine, to reset. We have the chance to repent, to turn from darkness and turn into the light. A few years ago, we imagined what it would be like if we stopped going to church. In fact, uh, the title of the series was Stop Going to Church and Be the Church. So we imagined what it would be like if we just stopped doing things by rote and really became the people of God, a community of believers and seekers who welcomed and respected all and everyone who came through the doors and conscripted each other for God's work. And now in 2022, we can't wait. It's not that we can't wait, it's that we cannot wait, men and women. We mustn't wait to do church, doing church. So we ask how, when life is so complex and so confusing? Well, the Presbyterian Book of Order, imagine that. The Presbyterian Book of Order, half of our Presbyterian Constitution gives us direction by distilling the great ends of the church, not just the pleasant or the productive or the satisfying ends of the church, but the great, did I say great? The the great ends of the church, the proclamation of the gospel, the shelter and nurture of God's people, the practice of right worship, orthodox, meaning right, praise, giving God right praise, and the preservation of truth, Last week we looked at the isness of God. What is the truth? And we determined that the truth is Jesus Christ. So this week, we're looking at the fifth great end of the church, and that is doing justice. Doing justice. All of this in context of the exhibition of the kingdom of heaven to the world. So remember, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Showing by what we do, how we talk, how we act. Showing whose we are to the world that needs to know whose it is and how to act and what to do in times of great joy and of great trial. 
This is what we're talking about. Now we acknowledge, oh Lord, we do, the journey to Calvary, the clarity, the perseverance, the pain, the suffering that that we and all creation might know abundant lives, satisfying, useful, purposeful lives, worthwhile lives by following Jesus, by following Jesus God in God's delight, and by sharing God's love. So, so let's do church. We have a story to tell and good news to share. Now, 211 years ago, on April 3rd, Reverend Andrew Flynn delivered a sermon from this pulpit, from this pulpit at the dedication of this sanctuary. He began this way. He said, matters of everlasting interest and eternal consequence demand our attention this day. Matters of everlasting interest and eternal consequence demand our attention this day. And so it is, and so they do. Justice. Biblical references to the word justice mean to make right. Justice is, first and foremost, a relational term. People living in right relationship with God, with one another, and with the natural creation. The Bible makes social justice a mandate of faith and a fundamental expression of what it looks like to follow Jesus. From the first to the second testaments, from the old to the new, God shows love and compassion for the weak, for the vulnerable, for the marginalized, for the disenfranchised, for the disinherited. A fellow named Tim Dearborn writes in Reflections on Advocacy and Justice, he writes, for Christians, the pursuit of social justice for the poor and oppressed is the decisive mark, the decisive mark of being people who submit to the will and the way of God. I pray that is us. Justice means loving our neighbors as we love ourselves and is rooted in the character and nature of God. As God is just and loving, so we are called to do justice and to live in love. But it's really not about what. It's more about who. You see, social justice becomes less about what and more about who when we are called to prioritize as followers of Christ. We get tangled in disagreements about the what in relation to social justice because it often deals with contentious issues like, you can imagine, budgets, taxes, labor laws, social protections, safety nets. Instead, we should craft and recognize common ground around who God calls us to be concerned about, starting with what often enables our ideologies to trump our theology and our spirituality. As Christians, as we who would be known to be followers of Christ, the building blocks of social justice lie in human dignity, in human flourishing, and the sacredness of life. The source of social justice is God's perfect righteousness, God's perfect justice and radical love. Social justice is about creating kingdom space in the here and the now, bearing witness to the beloved kingdom yet to come. So every time we use our voice and our influence against injustice, Every time, whether it's human trafficking or rights abuses or babies dying needlessly from disease and malnutrition, every time we provide a foretaste of God's kingdom to come. A few years ago, a radio talk show host suggested that you should ask your church this. He said, are you down with this social justice thing? And if they were to say, yeah, (laughs) yeah, we're all in with this social justice thing, then the radio house host said, run as fast as you can and flee that church and report them. I don't know to whom, but report them. And later he referenced an image of a swastika and a hammer and sickle, declaring that social justice has the same philosophy as the Nazis and the communists. How sad. How dangerous. How wrong the people of God, the people of God are to care for, equip, and love all of God's people. So I would say that, yes, we are down with this social justice thing. 
We are down with dynamic biblical social justice that leads to the dignity, the worth, the safety, and the flourishing of all people. Love in God's own as Jesus commanded. Remember, Jesus didn't suggest. Barbara Brown Taylor, in her book, Bread of Angels, said, in the topsy-turvy kingdom of God, the most unlikely people are the most likely to be the agents of God. The ones who live in the world below our kneecaps, the children. The ones who are stuck at the end of the line. The ones who are sobbing on someone's shoulder because they are always, always, always last. In God's world, things are different. Gurgling babies derail taped depositions. Second sons get to go first. While servants sit down at tables they used to polish, and the greatest disciple is the one who waits on them. So if you want to enter this kingdom, men and women, there is a way. Find a nobody to put your arms around. So as we seek to be the gathering of Christ's followers, we must be the agents of God's mercy, God's justice, and God's love. So the question is this, are you? Are you down with this social justice thing, this biblically mandated social justice thing for caring for those whom Jesus cares for? Well, let us reclaim and recommit to serving a God who shows a particular interest, a particular concern for the least, the last, and the lost. When the doors are flung open after the service, before you go to the reception hall, I pray that you will run to report us Run and report us here. Report that the good news of the gospel is for everyone. And don't forget that the Second Presbyterian Church is down with it. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. What? People of God said? Amen. All right. All right.